what's up YouTube? I'm back with another video. Uh, you might be wondering when I'm doing all these books on display, right? And in today's lesson, we're going to be proving that we are living underwater. We are living underwater. Okay? So we're going to go into these books. Eating in Egypt, The Truth of God. The book of God, uh, this book again, Black History Magazine, we are going to be going into, um, we're going to be exposing, exposing a movie called Cocoon and the movie called Pandora. We open up the tab here and type in the movie Cocoon. I know somebody asked me to, to uh, expose this movie. So, stop your seatbelts on, because this is about to be broken down like, like never before, okay? So before we get into the good stuff, we have to, we got to do some reading. We got to break these words down, okay? So, if I have to make two parts of this, I will. Okay, so, in the back in the dictionary, right? You have, so the Hebrew word for water is Mayim, right? Water, right? In Egypt, in Egypt, water, they call it, it could be read as smooth. Here's the glyph. Here's the Egyptian hieroglyph right here, right? So when you, when you urinate, what is your urine? Water, okay? So you have here, Mayim, water, okay? You can even type it in on the, on the, um, Type it in on uh, right here. Uh, Arabic word. For water. Okay. So here's the Arabic word for water. Right. Egypt, water, Mu, Maya. Three, 
Genesis. All right? Now, what you want to do is, so, here. Okay, so this is east, eastward, right? So, it says, we click on earth, I mean, we click on heaven, it says heaven is Shemayim. So, so you need to break this word apart. They said that heaven is a sky. Okay? And it says, so we're in, we're, in, we're in heaven. We're in the water. It's dipping layers in water. So, Shemayim. So we just, we broke to break the word apart. Take, take off the, the predicate. You have a predicate. Subject and the predicate, right? The subject is shah and the mind is predicate, right? So you break break this word apart, okay? So you look up in the sky, you're looking at water. You're underwater, okay? Now, let's put this to the side and let's do some reading. Let's put that to the side. And we're going to come from uh, this book right here first. The book of God. Okay. And we want to stop. We want to do this real quick. So we know that energy is carbon. It says, once again, what is blackness? The blacker a person is, the more rich such person is with a divine jewel and precious treasure of melanin. Melanin is more than a color. Melanin is black as melanin. Melanin is carbon, and carbon is energy. The law of physics teach that energy was never created, nor can energy be destroyed. Energy is the ether of God from which everything gets its existence and motion. Energy in its manifested form is melanin, which materializes as blackness. So we know that the sun is condensed melanin. We are condensed forms of, of the sun. Because the, the sun in its true form is black. Okay? Now, let's put that to the side. We're going to come back to this. And what we're going to do is, we're going to go here to the ancient Egyptian creation myth, right? And it says it that, uh, let's see. Okay, it says that in all of these myths, the world was said to have emerged from an infinite, lifeless sea when the sun rose for the, for the first time. Okay? Now, let's do this real quick. Um, one second. One second. Okay. So we left off. We left off with Adam Cabin, right? So Adam Cabin is the primordial man, right? This is in the this is the, the Jewish Kabbalah. Adam Cabin is, is the primordial man, right? And it says that. He's also called Adam El Young, the Most High, right? Or they call him Adam, right? They call him the Supreme Man. Wait a minute. You got Supreme Man and you got Superman. Adam Cabin is the Supreme Man. Adam Cabin is the Black Man. Adam Cabin is is Superman. Okay? So it says that Adam Cabin uh, in the Kabbalah, the first spiritual world that came into, into being after the contraction of God's infinite light. Okay? And uh, the reigning Kabbalah, the, the description of Adam Cabin is anthropomorphic. Nonetheless, Adam Cabin is divine light. Without vessels, pure potential. You see that? 
Adam Cabin is divine light. Now, we need to connect this divine light with this with this Adam Cabin and this then this uh, uh primordial waters. This black water. This deep, this deepness, this abyss. Okay? Now I'm about to make parts, I'm about to make two parts of this, because this is gonna be some deep stuff. So take notes, okay? Take notes. Alright. So we just seen that in the, in the ancient Egyptian creation myth, they said that they say that um these are black people remember. Uh, keep in mind now. Uh, the world was said to have emerged from an infinite lifeless sea. From an infinite lifeless sea. Sea is water. Okay, so now let's do some reading. Let's go here to uh here. Um, it says, as spirit increased in velocity, spirit is energy, it acquired more and more mass and became more and more dense. As it reached gamma factor, it became, quote, frozen in matter. Matter is energy. Every particle of matter is imbued with an, with an enormous amount of spirit, which is frozen with, within it. This is why the Eastern religions teach that the infinite all pervades everything and is in all pervades everything and is in everything. The greatest concentration of the spirit of God is in matter. This is why we this is why we said earlier that, that matter is the conveyor of the of the spirit. Energy equals uh, e equals e equals mc squared. So it says God's self creation, ancient East Indian tradition. It says unbeknownst to most. India is one of the great lands of the black man. Scholars such as uh, Sutterman, Ivan M. Sutterman, Baldwin, and uh, Houston, and others have con conclusively shown that the original inhabitants of that continent were black. The Indus Valley civilization displayed a high level of civilization possessed by the aboriginal black Indians. The religious, the religious texts of India, the Rig Veda, the Purunas, and the laws of Manu, and the uh, Upanishads all sprang from the wisdom of these earlier blacks. The scriptures of the East Indians detail the, the earlier history and development of God. The eternal all with them was, a, was, uh, was an abstract, indefinable, quote, causeless cause called the Parabrahma or Vishnu. The supreme all at this stage is not yet God. In the beginning, according to the laws of Manu, Vishnu existed within the womb of space. And those spaces is water. At a certain time, Vishnu made a concentration into itself and produced a central point called a central point called Nara, uh, Nara or Nara. The point is described as the navel of Vishnu. It is also described as the Mandum egg, Brahma the creator. Issue forth from this egg or navel of Vishnu, the Adam. Manly P. Hall, in the man grand symbol of mysteries, recounts the Indian history of origins. From the old records, we gather the following Nari, uh, Nari uh, Yaya, an epic of Vishnu contemplating the creation of the, of the universe, first generated the quote, waters of causation. Then, moving upon the face of the waters, he dropped the seed of the world, Adam, into the deep. Within the egg was born Purusha, the heavenly man, resplendent as the sun. Within the egg, the Adam, also are the locus or worlds, by which is meant all, ex all aspects of existence which can be sensed by the perceptions of created things. The egg was originally described as being without consciousness, but the creator having entered into the consciousness of time, destiny and law, the egg became alive and Purusha issued forth. Now let's keep on going. Keep on going. One second. One second. Like I said, if I, make, if I gotta make two parts of this, I will. 
So stay tuned. Okay. So it says here that from out of the egg or Adam, the creator God emerges as a brilliantly luminous man. When the egg or Adam became alive, it was invested with Mahat, divine intelligence, issuing from the first egg or Adam, according to the laws of Manu, were nine other makings, the quote, ten laws of being or ten creative forces. Um, and then we're going to drop down here. We're going to drop down here. And it says here that, uh, let's see here. One second. Okay, so we're gonna drop down. It says that uh, from the Adam issue for Purusha, the heavenly man, who is identified in Indian literature with Brahma, the creator. Brahma is the first man as well as, well as the creator. Monia Williams in Indian wisdom observes when the universal and infinite being, Prabhu Brahma, Vishnu, the only really existing entity, wholly without form. And unbound, and unbound, wish to create for his own entertainment the phenomena of the universe. He assumed the quality of the activity and became a male person as Brahma the Creator. Even though Brahma initially emerged as a brilliantly, brilliantly luminous divine man, um, ancient Indian texts record that he wrapped this body with the black primordial matter, producing the God's black body. The Purunas take thus take notice of the quality of the darkness pervading Brahma's assuming body. Because of this quote quality of darkness which pervaded his new body, Brahma was called Kali Hasma, I mean Hamsa, the black swan. We recall that in the laws of Manu, Vishnu was then called the Hamsa Van, behind, meaning he who uses the swan as his vehicle. Brahma is the conveyor of Vishnu, just as Adam Kadmi was the conveyor of the Iron Soul, and Allah, the original man, was the conveyor of that primordial, primordial electrical, electric force, all three being the same God. Now, it says here that, um, let's see here. We're going to go over here, and we want to read this part. Um, in one second, we are we are living on the water. Okay. Okay. Let's keep on going. Uh, we want to go here to <coughs> in uh, page ninety two, same book. The Atum, the self-created god of Egypt, and Kemi. Gerald Mansi, through his various writings, has shown conclusively that the Hebrew religion with this Old Testament is a reworking of the ancient Egyptian wisdom. The Egyptians, like the Indians, made a point to narrate not only the history of creation but the history of the creator as well. So now, if you go back and watch, if you if you ever if, if you read the book called The Africans Wrote the Bible, they tell you in that book that black people came up with the concept and idea of God. Of what we call God or the Creator, okay? So if black people came with that concept and idea that tells you right there that gives you the answer that black people are God. So it goes in to say here that according to the priests of Anu, one of the earliest Egyptian uh, cities, the beginning began with the primeval waters called Nun. Noon was the pri uh, primeval watery mass from which all the gods were evolved. Within Noon was the hidden god Neph, Kenef, who is equivalent to the Indian Vishnu and Hebrew Ayn Sof, all of whom represents the primordial electric force. Um, now we're going to drop down here. And it says, Dr. Brush, 
Dr. Brooks, in his religion and mythology, narrates the Egyptian history of origin as such. He says, there was in the beginning neither heaven nor earth, and nothing existed except a boundless, primeval mass of water, which was shrouded in darkness, and which contained within itself all the germs or beginnings, male and female, of everything which was to be in the future world. The divine primeval spirit connect which formed an essential part of the primeval matter felt within itself the desire to begin the work of creation and its word woke, uh, and its word woke to life the world the form and shape of which it had already depicted to itself. The first act of creation began with the formation of an egg, the atom, out of the primeval matter which from which broke forth the atom, the immediate cause of all life upon earth. Uh, the bright of the light from the water exploding on the atom and the fire of the moisture's mass of the primeval matter and of autumn from new formed the starting point of all religious speculation, conjectures, and theories of the Egyptian priests. Now, we're going to go over here. We're going to go over here. And we want... Second. Okay, going here. Okay, so now we're going to put this to the side. We're going to go to this book right here, Truth of God. And we're going to go right here to the cosmog uh, cosmogony egg and the primordial atom. And our Sebi has arrived, the honorable, the honorable Elijah Muhammad makes the astound observation. Take a magnifying glass and start looking at these little atoms out here in front of you. You see they are egg-shaped and they are oblong. You crack them open and you find everything of them that you find out here. Give me one second. It says, ancient tradition also describes the primordial atom in which everything else, including God, was originally contained and out of which everything, including God, emerged as an egg. The cosmogonic or mudin egg symbolized the key to the mystery of origins. Okay? Um, let's see here. Um, one second. Okay, let's go here to, uh, we want to read, right, uh, let's see here, it's like here you have this figure right here, right, this is in the creator of God Brahma before emerging out of the cosmogonic egg. Right. This is uh, Manly P. Hall, Grand Civil of the Mysteries. The universe was was, um, was enveloped in darkness, unperceived, un, uh, undistinguishable. Then the in, uh, irresistible self-existent Lord, seeking to produce various creatures, dis deposited in them the primordial waters, a seed cork, a seed cork. This seed became a golden egg, Adam, resplendent as the sun, in which he himself was born as Brahma, the progenitor of the world, of the word, being formed by that first cause, that, that is called Brahma, this egg after the creator, after the creator had inhabited for a thousand years, burst open and Brahma issuing forth, meditation commenced by the work of creation. Now, we want to read here. Okay. One second. 
second. Okay. So it says here, the primordial Adam and the birth of God. According to these ancient texts, this this uh, egg or Adam, also depicted as the lotus plant, began rotating and moving on the waters, which which movement originated time. Within this Adam, the creator deity now resided, and eventually from this Adam, he emerged as a luminous anthropos man, the so-called sun god Atum Ray of Egypt. All right. When the creator God first emerged, the ancient source tells us he lacked the black body. Indeed, he was light that separated from the that separated from and emerged out of the darkness. His body, we are told, was originally a body of light, described variously as white gold, yellow gold, or red gold. The brilliance of this body surpassed that of the sun, which the creator deity sun god created only as a sign and a vicar. This brilliantly luminous body proved lethal to his future creation. His, uh, his creatures were perishing at the sight of it, and his cosmos was being scorched. Listen to this. The creator deity, the, the creator deity decided to cloak his luminous, luminosity in a Body veil, bo bodily veil, which he made from the primordial waters out of which he emerged. That primordial matter, black and aquarius, meaning watery, became the substance of his new body, which he wore over the luminous form like a garment, concealing its brilliance. But some of this brilliance shone through his, shown through the hair pores of the new black body. And this produced a dark blue iridescence of gl or glow. The result was the sapphiric body of the created deity. While the luminous fiery body was terrible and destructive, the blue black sapphiric body was beautiful and uh, auspicious, a mercy to the creatures. You see that? Um, it goes on to say that. Blue as the sky, dark as the rain cloud, was the was the uh, personification of beauty. Give me one second. Was the personification of beauty. Um. Let's keep on going. Okay. It goes and say that uh, the act of cloaking the divinely luminous form in a black body was considered was considered a divine sacrifice, a sacrifice that resulted in the first human being, Allah, the original man, and which permitted the creation of the more densely material world. The blue-black body of the deity was the most occurring secret of the ancient mysteries. In Egypt, it was the mystery of the unity of Ra, or Ra, and his black body, Osiris. As one text from a new kingdom royal tomb associated with the mystery rites reveals, It is a great mystery. It is Ra and Osiris. He who reveals it will die a sudden death. According to the Book of Gates, this is the mystery of the great God. In Vedic India, or Vedic India, the central theme of what can be denoted by no other term than Aryan mysticism is the secret of Agni, fire, hidden in water. Right? The mystery of the luminous Brahma, creator, God, hidden within the black and uh, watery body, Aquarius body. Right? The Akkadian bull ritual likewise associated the pelt of the black bull with the mystery of Anu, Enil, Enki, and, and, and of Nima, the black gods of the black gods of Suma, a okay. cat. Okay? So it says that we are beings of light and and we, we have to cloak ourselves, bathe ourselves in in uh in carbon. Cause that, that telling you clear as day.
They're telling you clearly there that when the first created God emerged, the ancient sources tell us, the ancient sources tell us he lacked a black body. Indeed, he was light that separated from and emerged out of the darkness. His body, we are told, was originally a body was 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 originally a body of light, described variously as white gold, yellow gold, or real or, or red gold. You see that? The brilliance of this body surpassed that of the sun. So, so we are brighter than the goddamn sun. Okay, here's 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 um here's um. Here's Brahma, right? Emerging from the lotus plant, primordial seed of Adam. The lotus is emerging from the navel of Vishnu, primordial universe. So, okay, you have here in Egypt. All right. Um, see if I can help me do this real quick. Like I said, if I have to, I have to make a part two to this. Okay? Um, so here's Adam Cabin with with eternal body of with eternal body of light, right? And external black veil. So so the, this carbon that we have. Is is veiling the light that's that's inside of us, cause the shit is too blinding. This is just in our natural state, our physical form. But Adam Cadman, we we we've already proven that Adam Cadman is a black man, with with eternal body of light. What does eternal mean? Eternal means inside. Let's look it up. Eternal, of or sit, situated on the inside. You see that? Now, let's do this. Now, check this out. I want to expose a couple of things. So, yeah, Adam Cabin, right? Okay. Now, this is on Wikipedia. Now, check this out. Let's scroll down here. Okay. We're going to scroll. We're going to scroll down here. And... They're talking about Adam Cabin, right? Now, check this out. The Cosmic Man, right? It says that outside of Abrahamic, Abrahamic context, the Cosmic Man is also the archetypal figure that appears in creation myths of a wide variety of cultures. Um, now, check this out. Let's drop down here. One second, I'm, I'm overlooking. I know I am. Okay, check this out. Look at this. The the Marvel Comics character e character Eternity has called himself Adam Cadman. This is Marvel Comics. Let's click on the character Eternity. Eternity is a fictional cosmic entity, right? Appearing in American comic books published by Marvel. What colors? What colors in Eternity? He is black and blue. His abilities: reality warping, nine omniscience, and cosmic awareness. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Eternity was created as the second sentient force supporting creation. Before eternity, there was a single universe whose animating force was the primal cosmic being that would later call itself the, the first call itself the first firmament. Okay? Now, 
Let's put this to let's put that slow this window out. Okay. Uh, we're gonna expose this movie right here called Cocoon. This movie called Cocoon was made back in 1985. Right? And look at this. It says see that everything is everything you dreamed of, it's nothing you expect expect now see you have water right here you have a light coming out now watch this check this out so here's the movie called cocoon right 1985 we're gonna read the plot now before we read the plot let's go into this book right here black history okay now when you in the movie called cocoon in the movie called cocoon um we're gonna click on the images Click on the images, right? And here, here you have again, right? So the white people, I got, I'm about to read the plot to you, right? But here are, here are the beings without their uh, physical form, their light. Okay. Now let's read, let's let's read this real quick. Let's, re let's, let's look at some of these pictures real quick. Okay. So you, so you have here it says, This shows the black Atlanteans and black Egyptians as the founders of the black of the Mayan, Inca, and Aztec society. Right? So we know that the, we know that the Atlanteans, Atlantis were black people. Okay? All right? Now, it says black men, guys of black Atlantis, and black Egypt were space travelers. Okay. So, the Atlantis, the Atlanteans were black. Right? The Atlantis were black. Okay. Now we're gonna read this plot for uh, for um Cocoon. And then we're gonna expose movie Pandora, man, and then I'm gonna get out of here. So you got here. Cocoon. Okay. Let's now take notes. Now listen to this. The plot. It says about 10,000 years ago, peaceful aliens from the planet Antario set up an outpost on Earth of Atlantis. When Atlantis sank, 20 aliens were left behind kept alive in a large rock-like cocoons in, at the bottom of the ocean. Now, a group, a group of, of Antarians have returned to collect them, the, uh, disguising themselves as humans. They rent a house with a, with a swimming pool and charge the water with, the life, with life force to give, the, to give the cocoon Antarians energy to survive the trip home. Um. Okay, this white man Jack he he comes up upon a, a, one of the uh, 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 beings as a woman, right? And he finds out later on that that they're not they're not what what uh, what he expects. He thinks that, that they're humans, that they're people, but they're not. The outside is the outside physical looks looks normal to him, but the inside. The transformation is something totally different. He's not, he wasn't expecting that. Okay? So, with this Antarians, I believe they tried to word, but I believe the Antarians supposed to be Atlanteans. So it said that, that the Antarians, the cocoons, return to the sea. The Antarians often take the residents of the retirement home with them to Antarian, where, where they would never grow old, where they would never grow older and never die. You see that? So, they're telling that, that these people, Cocoon, that these people, around 10,000 years ago, so we know that 10,000 years ago, white folks wasn't in existence. So, this ain't talking about them. Because the white man, right here, the planet Earth was a world of all black people from the beginning of 66 trillion or 78 trillion years 
to 4000 BC, it says, The Grimaldi Africans occupied all parts of Europe in 15,000 BC. The first white man was made 4000 BC from black albinos. So 4,000 to 6,000 years? It says about 10,000 years ago, peaceful aliens from the planet Antares set up an outpost on Earth on Atlantis. When Atlantis sank, so let's do the math. So it's saying, so 10,000 years take away 4,000 years to so 6,000 years how much. They, you, you still, you still be having Mr. White Man. Let's do the math. They want to expose the movie uh, Pandora. So you got 10,000. Take away 4,000. Is what? 6,000 years. Okay? So this ain't talking about no white people. Doing this stuff. Making, uh, talking about these uh, Atlanteans. People living in the water. It's talking about black people. Movie cocoon just exposed that quick. Less than less than ten minutes. You got some light coming out of the water. A ship. I keep on telling y'all ass we underwater. Now let's go into the movie called Pandora. Okay. So you got here the movie called Pandora. Let's read the movie called Pandora. Pandora, this movie came out in 2009, right? And it says it's the plot. After human overpopulation depletes Earth resources, humanity builds an interstellar arc, right? An interstellar arc is a conceptual, conceptual space vehicle designed for interstellar travel. Okay? It says, um, they built an interstellar car called the Elysium, right? It carries 60,000 people on a 123 year trip to colonize Tannis, an Earth like planet. The passengers are placed in hypersleep, okay, and things like that, right? Now, let's drop down here, right? You need to watch this movie and see what's going on. Because they think that they flown, they think they're in outer space. <clears throat> they think they're in outer space. In space, flown, flying around, out, and flying in outer space, so far out of space. But check this out. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Where's it at? Okay, by aluminum when it's in it. Okay. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for here. Okay, here it is. Okay, now check this out. The film title is a fictional slang term for a for a form of psychosis called orbital dysfunctional syndrome caused by deep space. Now let's click on deep space. It says outer space or simply space is the expanse that exists beyond the earth. The earth is what? The ground. And between celestial bodies. Outer space is not completely empty. It is a hard vacuum containing a low density of particles, predominantly a plasma of hydrogen and helium, as well as electromagnetic, as well as electromagnetic radiation, magnetic, magnetic fields, nutrient dust, and cosmic rays. They say that predominantly uh, space is a hard vacuum containing a low density of particles, predominantly a plasma of Hydrogen. What is hydrogen? Hydrogen is water. Hydrogen is the chemical element with the symbol H and the atomic number one. With a standard atomic weight, okay, blah 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 blah. And then it says that um uh let's go here. Okay, so it says that since hydrogen really forms uh covalent com compounds. With most non-metallic elements, most of the hydrogen on Earth exists in molecular forms such as water or, or organic compounds. Now, let's go back here to the movie um, Pandora. And we go down to the end. Right? And in the end, 
they on this ship. They think they find it. They think they find it out of space, but they're not. Now let's now watch this. Check this out. This towards the end now, right? They're killing these creatures that's on this ship with them, right? And it says to that. Um, let's see. Here. Okay. It says Gallo. You need to watch the movie. It says Gallo. Increasingly agitated, and Peyton propels a sedative. As they wrestle over, over the sedative, Peyton is, is, uh, is revealed to have hallucinated Gallo. Gallo killed the real Peyton long ago when he developed Pandorum upon him. Earth was gone because he went into Peyton's pod. Gallo mistakenly believed himself to be Peyton when he woke up with, with amnesia. Leland re reaches the, the bridge, and Gallo. Gallo kills him with the, with the sedator. When Bauer and Nadia confront him, Gallo opens the shutters on the bridge windows, revealing that the ship is adrift in deep space with no stars with no stars visible. The shock pushes Bauer further towards insanity. Taking advantage of Bauer's mental state, Gallo argues that they must maintain their violent society rather than revive civilization. Nadia observed bioluminescent ocean life through the windows. And the computer displayed that 920 that the uh, the computer displayed that 923 years have elapsed since the mission launched. The ship reached Tannis 800 years ago and landed itself in the ocean. Bauer hallucinate hallucinates a mutant attack and breaks a window. As water pours into the ship, Nadia and Bauer climb into the hypersleep pod. The flood triggers an emergency protocol which ejects all active pods to the surface while, Ga while Galo and the remaining mutants drown. Bauer and Nadia surface near a lush coastline and they witness the other pods ascend. So, Nadia observes bioluminescent I, uh, ocean life through the window, so they supposed to be in outer space, but the whole town they in the water. So what is what is bioluminescent? Bioluminescent. Bioluminescent. It's production of emissions of light by living organisms. You see that? Are you are you seeing this? So in the movie, in the movie Pandora. You need to watch it. They were underwater the whole time. Thinking they're in space flying around. They don't know goddamn out of space. These people is, 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 uh, is underwater. We just read deep space. So we are underwater. Now, if I got enough time, I'm going to play this real quick. I want to play this real quick for you, okay? Now check this out. Check this out. Let me play this brother's clip real quick. I've got, we are underwater. We are underwater. Now let's go here. I'm just using this for educational purposes, right? This brother, he talked about it too as well, but he's still under under the illusion that you know, with all this uh this let me see the type in uh, spiritual. Okay, let me go back here. Look on this. Look on this. Let's drop down here. Like I said, if I have to make a part two to this, I will. Proving that we are underwater. I don't think I'm going to have enough time to play it all. Okay, so let's go here to the first one. Listen to this. Okay, here it is. I told you that I would... 
and show in scripture that there is no spiritual. I had someone and so spirit just means breath, wind, and air, right? I understand the new people. I understand those that have been doctrinated into Christian teaching and they have no idea where this comes from, this word spiritual. And I showed before what is spiritual and what is dealing with. Of course, it's dealing with slavery and the slave masters. Uh, I've already brought that out. For the new ones, you have to check that video out. This video here is to show and prove with scripture. There is no scripture proof of spiritual. I had a new person come to the channel and say, you are mixing spiritual. You're mixing spiritual things with natural okay. things. You fast see? forward. So you believe in deception. Enemy has crept in. Teachers are correct. Of course, this is not accurate. Here, we have earth here. And of course, we know the firmament. He put the sun and the moon and the stars inside the firmament. And above the firmament, there's the water. Now, this isn't. this water should be up here. And not going around like this. We are underwater. Get this. Get this, you spiritual people. We are underwater. Everything you see is physical. And of course, we have the underworld. I'm going to go into this also and show the underworld in scripture. I'm going into the firmament and I'm going to show the waters above and the other Shemayim. All right. First scripture. First scripture, Genesis 1, 6 and 7. People want to know, where should I start reading in the Bible? Go to Genesis 1 and 1. You have to learn over. You have to, you have to go back to the beginning and start Yahuwah's sin. Let there be a firmament. Remember, I told you, he did it. He spoke every firmament in the midst of the waters. He hovered over the waters. And then what happens? You have the waters... And then the firmament and the waters, the firmament in the mist, in the middle of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. We understand water went up. That's why it's called Shemayim. You see the importance of Aubrey? Shemayim. Shemayim. What's Shemayim? Shemayim is water. That's this right here. You go here. Faith of the waters. Waters is Mayim. Waters. So you got the heavens. They say heavens is the sky. And they say they call it Shemayim. Heaven, sky. So it means it's, it's, it's the watery sky. So we just found that water, Mayim is water. And the sky, that's Shemayim. It's the watery sky. Okay? Even in Arabic, people don't want to relate Arabic to to Aubrey, but they are sister language, brother, sister language. Mayim, Mayim, in Arabic, water. You ask for Mayim, they know you want water. So they knew water was above. But here we go today, we don't understand water is above. We don't understand we're underwater. So Yahuwah made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. You either believe this word or you believe man. Your people, natural water. The same water that's in the sea. They came. It's the same water. They was. It was just one. One huge sea. And he separated the waters. And he used the firmament to separate them. And this and this water, uh, once again, it was all together. This is how we are under the water. So the waters which was above, heaven shall be the agent. The waters above is the agent above the firmament. And the waters which is under the earth shall be the recipient. And all, watch this, and all shall be shall be destroyed upon the earth and who dwell under the extremities of heaven by this means shall they now let's go to video two he did a part two now listen to this uh oh time we got five minutes left 
We are underwater. You gotta, you have to question. You gotta question. You have to question your existence. You got to. Part two. So when we die, understand this nothing for them. He said, "I created this black hell pit." He is. Go see this at going when he pictures how. Enoch walked with the most high and the most, we don't know where, adding to his word. But one, I'm going to read 7 through 27. And it's going to show Louis how he fell into a deep sleep and what he saw. It says, and I was grieving for the race of the sons of men. Do you grieve for the race of the sons? Do you look at the wicked and grieve? If you have the most high's heart, you should look at the race of man today and grieve. And he says, I pray to you, Lord, that I might be saved. And there, he says, then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a mountain, and I was upon it. And behold, the heavens were open, and a malak of Yahuwah said to me, Louis, enter. So the heavens opened up. Here we have the heaven opening up, and it's telling him to enter. So he entered going through the... He says, and I entered from the first heaven. Heaven means the water. And I saw there a great sea hanging. What a sea? Water. The firmament. And he says, and I entered from the, from the first heaven. When you look up into the sky, you see the, the sun, the moon, the stars. That's the first heaven. He says... Entered from the first heaven, and I saw therefore a great hanging sea. He came from under the firmament, he came up, and he saw a great hanging sea. Like it's hanging, all he could see was water. He has no idea what's holding it, so he called it a hanging sea. This is what he saw. Once again, him coming from the earth, he's seen something physical. And therefore, he says, and further, I saw a second heaven. So he look up. He see the sea below. He look up, and he see a second heaven. And it's far brighter and more brilliant than the one we have here on earth today when we look up. He says, for there was boundless light also there in it. So the light was continuous. It was no darkness. He said, and I said to the Malak, why is this so? He didn't understand what he was seeing. He's in another, it looks like he left this world and went to another world. This is what he saw. And this is another reason we know, you know, NASA teach us space and they go out into space. What we understand, they can't go into space because space is like spiritual. There is no space. There's no rocks floating out beyond all that's a lie. And the Malak said, no rocks floating. It's, it's like spiritual. There is no space. There's no rocks floating out beyond. All that's a lie. And this goes back to what I said before. When we look in the sea, in the ocean, there's water. When we look up in the so-called sky, the heavens, it's water. Right? What are we breathing? H2O. Water. We are underwater. We're underwater. Wake up. Wake up. It's like pretty much like we like in a fishbowl. You know what I'm saying? But it's infinite. Infinity means numberless. You can't count it. So this video right here, we're just showing you that we are living under water. There's no such thing as outer space or space. Okay? And with that being said, I'm running out of time, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.